and I have only one point left. One of my questions was about magic. What about magic? Because uh, I've gotten quite used to using magic within, you know, the Wicca, Wiccan community, sort of. And um, so I asked them about that. And magic, at least within the group of people that I contacted, isn't extremely popular. Again, it's an individual thing, whether you use magic or not. And if you do, uh, it comes much closer to shamanism than it comes to witchery. One form of magic that they tend to use, or that I've read about at least, is that a group of people will chant and through the chanting one of those people who's sitting in the special chair will get into a trance and through that trance that person will be able to speak to the other side of the veil and uh, relay messages to this world uh, while the chanting keeps going and keeps going and keeps going I immediately got this image from uh, uh, Happy Feet, if you've ever seen that movie. They go to a, an oracle there, and it was kind of, you know... But maybe that's just my skepticism. I, I probably have to just be there once and experience it. We could go into the whole question of what is magic, and if you would ever ask me what is magic, I would say saying a prayer is magic. Uh, and of course in that aspect or from that point of view there is loads of magic in Asatru but in this case I meant the more um, the little bit more complex magic or more spell casting type of magic that's the magic I meant in this case mm. so now I've given you all this information now I'm going to wrap it up with my final um, verdict because as I said before I was making, before I made this video, I announced this video to be part of a series of me researching different paths to try and find a path that closest resembles mine. Since I've been doing this for 10 years and I still don't really know where I fit in. And I never really mind it until recently. So, do I fit into Asatru? as far as I can tell from just a couple of months of research. Um, I think the inclusiveness and, you know, the not being able to do something wrong part. Now it's, re this is gonna sound really bad, but the Silver Raven Wolf part of Alsa Truf I hate Silver Raven Wolf, uh, but the you know the the adjusting things to modern life. That part really really suits me, because you know things that are written in books are written for other people, for other situations, for other groups or individuals, and it's never it never fits on my situation. And that's the part uh, that I really liked. The other part that I really liked is that it works with local gods and goddesses. I mean, I'm in the middle of Scandinavia, well, <laughs> quite close to the North Pole, or the Pole Circle at the moment, but, you know, I'm in this hugely juicy Scandinavian life and then to link my spirituality to gods and goddesses that originated here as well. That feels really good as well. That, that, that makes... That makes me ground with feeling... That makes me feel grounded without doing a grounding exercise, sort of. It binds me to something and I really like that. Uh, what I don't like is that I kind of miss the ceremonial th side of Wicca. I like the small ceremonies, however small or big you make them. Um, and I like casting spells. For me it's a very effective way 
um, to focus myself and to focus the energy that flows around me into what needs to get done. So, yeah. Um, the final verdict is no, I'm not really an Asatruunda, but I'm not really not one either. So I'm not closer to the final answer yet. But that was this video. I think the next path that I will look into will either be um, the uh, beliefs of the Lapland people because you know they live here basically <laughs> I'm living in Lapland in Lapland uh, so I'd like to look into them as well and they are uh, as far as I know I know very little about it but that's very shamanistic and I want to look into that uh, so it's gonna be my next video in this series at least will either be about the Lapland beliefs or uh, pantheism or that corner. Um, but uh, see you next time. Bye!